Dustin Poirier is one of those. We do want to change our attention for just a moment and talk about some fights that recently got announced. You say the name Dustin Poirier, you see my guy. I light Alan up. Bur I'm looking at the <laughs> like, I mean, that's my dude. All right, so <laughs> listen. Uh, Dustin Poirier will face Benoit Saint Denis BSD at UFC 299 on March 9th. That is an incredible matchup. BSD is really on the rise, but your boy DP, I mean, he's kind of a legend. Yeah, and this fight, I think, took a lot of people by surprise. I mean, all I've been doing lately is watching my phone, waiting for these Dana White updates because he's been announcing yes. such big news. Now, let's look at this matchup for a minute. Poirier obviously coming off of a loss, a, lo a tough loss for the uh, BMF title right here. But the other side of things, it's the complete opposite, right? Benoit saint -Denis is on a tear right now, five fight win streak, seemingly finishing all his opponents. He seems to be on the rise in the division against a legend right now. They're meeting in the middle. A lot of people are saying... This is a dangerous fight. Why would Dustin Poirier, who's at the top of the division, a legend, go and fight down? Where he doesn't have a lot of options right now. But look, on the side of Dustin Poirier, I feel like this is a dangerous but very winnable fight. Benoit saint -Denis is fantastic in every area. And he tries to dissect his opponents and look to, for that weakness to try to exploit. But he's not a specialist in, in any one area. Dustin is a specialist in the boxing department. If he can keep this fight where he wants it and go into those later rounds. This is the five-round affair, guys. This isn't a three-rounder. This is where Dustin lives in those five-round type of wars. That would be the path to victory for Dustin, getting it into the late deep waters and testing how much heart, how much dog is in the good fighter in Benoit saint -Denis. Well, and that's the reason why Dustin is taking this fight. When he's talked about this before, he needs somebody that's going to keep him up at night. He needs somebody that he's going to think about that kind of scares him. And when you look at uh, Benoit St. Denis, mm -hmm. he scares everybody, yeah. which is why no one really wanted to fight him. But for Dustin, Dustin said, you know what? There's not many other guys out there for me. I might as well take the one guy who in the division that does scare me. So let me get this guy. Okay. I love it. You can never question Dustin's heart. Right. Okay, but uh, Alan, you know Dustin very well. You guys still train together a lot. He's the underdog in this one. Plus 120 to minus 140 for Benoit Saint Denis. It's surprising. I think when you look at it, it shocks you at first. But we have to look at what's going on here. I think these Recency odds. Recency bias. That thing? What's that? Well, I think it's the odds that Karen are, are coming completely from. Dustin's coming off of a loss. Yeah. Where is he at at this stage in his career at the age of 34, about to turn 35? Benoit saint need is on the rise. Yeah. He's the younger fighter, he's the fresher fighter, and he's on a tear right now. So I think they're looking at just what have you done lately yeah. in things. Yeah. But look, I, I was talking to Dustin. We had dinner the other night. And I said, look, my best years came at 36. He's only 34 right now. Mm -hmm. I think Dustin still has some good years ahead of him if he chooses to fight that long. Listen, I am not surprised by them odds. You know why? Because most people are stupid. <laughs> and that's why they made them odds the way they made them odds. <laughs> Dustin Poirier that's should be the favorite breakdown in this fight. Right here oh my no, Dustin Poirier should be the favorite in this fight. He's yeah. taking this guy into, five, into his yeah. world, yeah. into a five-round fight. A young guy who's never been there before, into a five-round fight. That's where Dustin lives. I, I think Dustin, yeah. in my opinion, he's the favorite. But I see why yeah. they did that. Yeah. I see why <laughs> I see why them I dummies did that. <laughs> ben Watson the knee is very good, but uh, yes, I think he is very good. Let's just say recency bias and move along. All right, uh, another fight that was announced. This one is for UFC 300, which of course is on April 13th. This is a title eliminator between Charles Oliveira, the former champ, and Armin Sarukian who we all know is just on the rise like crazy. Alan, what do you make of this matchup? Mm, another mouth-watering type <laughs> matchup right now. And I'll tell you what, this one kind of, kind of came a, a surprise to yeah. me because I was looking at the man out right here, the BMF title holder right here, and Justin Gaethje, but he's not in this one. Armand Saruki and the guy on the rise. Listen, this guy, as soon as he came into the UFC, his first fight in the UFC was against Islam Mahachev, and these guys grappled for 15 minutes. That's the type of level of grappling that he possesses. He's been in a bunch of tremendous wars. We have known since Ormond came into the UFC. He's one of those guys. He's going to be fighting for the belt one day. The day is now. Now he has that opportunity. Charles Oliveira doesn't get bigger in name and status and ranks. Opportunity arose right here. This is a tremendous matchup for both men. And we saw Charles Oliveira. I mean, Benny, I mean, he's all of our guys. We, we love him. But the way that he put... Benny out like that. I yeah. mean, it shows Oliveira is still one of the most dangerous people inside of the octagon when he steps foot inside of it. Yeah, he sure is. But this is a dangerous matchup for Charles Oliveira. And the reason why is because his crutch is to go to his guard. When he gets hurt, he'll fall back into his guard. Now, that was the problem when he fought Islam because Islam said, no problem. Yeah. I'm better than you on the ground. That could be the same situation in a fight like this where Armand Sarukian is not afraid to go to the ground with Charles Oliveira, making this a much more difficult fight than, he, than we expect it to be. Dean, are there dummies out there as well? Because Charles Oliveira is a plus 140 and Armand Sarukian is a minus 165. Well, mm. sometimes they get it right. <laughs> this time, this time they got it right. Oh, yeah? Yeah, they got it right. Charles, Charles is the dog in this one. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I mean, yeah. you know, I think we're looking at 
again, the guy on the rise, the younger fighter that's on the rise who they predict to possibly be a champion one day or at least contend for the title one day. We look at Charles Oliveira. He has had his shine, and they think now maybe those days are behind him. Maybe some people still speculate that there's a little bit of quit left in Charles Oliveira. He seems to prove us wrong all the time when you doubt against him. I don't know. This is just such a tremendous matchup. I think it can go either way, but I do think the younger guy, Armand, should be a little bit of the, uh, the favorite in this one. All right. Well, as we know, these fights are coming up. DP versus Benoit Saint-Denis at 299. Oliveira versus Sarukian at 300. We know Poirier and Oliveira guys are the underdogs. So which one of them is more likely to pull off the upset? Oh, oh. I mean, I mean, I think, I think <laughs> no, for you it's easy. Say, to me, it's not an upset. To me, like, I'm already going to say, because I think Dustin is going to win anyway. So I don't think that's an upset. I think that yeah. Dustin wins. And, and, and look, me and KB, we talk about the Benoit Saint-Denis. I mean, I mean, he is a guy that I am 100% on the bandwagon. I yes. think this guy is doing great things. He's a fun fighter to watch. He's good everywhere. I just think it could be a little bit too much too soon for him to bite off. Where you look at the Armand Saruki and Charles mm -hmm. Oliveira, this is a great timing matchup. But I think in the other one, Poirier should get the win in this one. Or at least I think he's the guy that's a little bit too soon for Benoit Saint-Denis. Yeah.